Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Robinson here again. And we're going to continue our studies. This time we're going to review for the grade 7 math exam on equations from units 2 and 3. So we have some very nice people we're going to get this ready for. So this goes out to these nice people here. If you need help with your homework, there's Dollar Teacher Homework Helpline at 212-777-3380. They're open from Monday to Thursday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Give them a call. They're very nice people and they will help you out. Don't forget to watch our show Math Time on Tuesdays from 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. Only on Optimum Cablevision Channel 15. But it's only in peak skill. All right, let's get going. So here's our first example. So we want to solve for P. Negative 6P equals 48. So I remember the father of algebra said, when you're given an equation, that's a problem with an equal sign, you must work backwards in order to solve it, doing the opposite or inverse. When you see the number negative six or a number next to a letter like negative six P, that means you are multiplying the number times the letter. The number is called a coefficient and the letter is called a variable. So when you multiply the coefficient times the variable, uh, in this problem, we have to do the opposite of multiplication. So the opposite of multiplication would be division. So instead of taking the negative 6 and multiplying it by the P, I'm going to take the negative 6 and divide it by both sides and what does that do, Dr. Rob? It cancels out the negative 6 down to 1 and leaves me with the P alone. And 48 divided by negative 6 equals negative 8, which is my answer for this question. So I hope you got negative 8. If you didn't, try it again. What operations would you have to use to solve the equation 18y equal 36? Well, uh, I remember we just did a question that was similar. So we have to work backwards according to the father of algebra. So we got to do the opposite. We have 18y, which means 18 is being multiplied by y. So we're going to do the opposite of multiplication, which is divide. So we're going to divide by 18 instead of multiply by 18. So I'm going to pick letter D. And there is my answer. All right, here's one. Which expression is equivalent to 2 parenthesis x plus 7 minus 18 x plus 4 fifths? So I notice this has a 35 there. I know it's question number 3, but the 35 means that it came from a state test. So this is a typical state test question that we have to practice to get it right. So I'm going to rewrite it, 2 parenthesis x plus 7 minus 18x plus a fraction of four-fifths. Wow, got a lot going on here. Well, if you remember, when we have a number next to parenthesis, that means we have to distribute that number to everything inside of the parenthesis. That means 2 is going to be multiplied first by the x, and then 2 is going to be multiplied by the plus 7. That's your distribution. That means you're passing out that 2 or multiplying it by what the terms on the inside. Now, keep in mind, Dr. Rob, you have a negative, I'm sorry, a minus 18x, and you're adding a fraction of 4 fifths. So keep that in mind. So let's get rid of the parenthesis here. 2 times x is just 2x. Two, 2 times plus 14, uh, plus 7 is plus 14. So remember, though, we have a minus 18x, and we have a plus 4 fifths. All right, what do we do now? Well, let's go back to expressions. There was a T chart that you had to deal with where you put your x's in one column and your constants in the other column. So or the last column, that is. 
So I'm going to get all my X's and get them in there. There's a 2X. Check. He's in there. Do I see any more X's? Yes, there's a minus 18X. And I'll check him off. So I put him in there. And are there any more X's? No, I see a plus 14 and a plus 4, 5. But that, those are constants. So we'll deal with those in a minute. Let's try to narrow down our choices. So we have a plus two, or a positive 2X and a minus 18X. The signs are different, so you cannot add them. And I know you're tempted to get 20, but no, use your calculator to deal with those numbers. Uh, pl 2 plus negative 18 gives you negative 16. And don't forget the X. So that means that choices could be C or D. So we got to deal with the constants now, which are the numbers. Well, the constant we have is a plus 14 and a fraction of four fifths. Well, 14 plus four fifths is just 14 and four fifths. So that's our answer, negative 16 and four fifths, 14 and four fifths. Well, they don't have that there, Dr. Rob. They, the, they have an improper fraction. All right, so let's deal with that improper fraction, the 14 and 4 fifths. Let's change that to a improper fraction. Hopefully you remember by multiplying the whole number, which is 14 times the denominator, and then add on the numerator to that sum. So plus 4, that'll give us a new numerator. The denominator, we should remember, it stays the same, which is 5. So we got a 5 as a denominator here already. So that's still up in there. We still have to figure out what's going to be the top number. Is it 139 or is it 74? Well, let me do the multiplication. 14 times 5, that'll give me 70, plus 4 is 74. That's the new numerator, and the denominator stays the same. So this one has the 74, so I'm going to choose C and not D. So my answer is choice C. Man, a lot of work. All right, so I hope you're enjoying what's going on and you're understanding it. If you're not sure, rewatch the video and write down your questions and bring them in. All right, number four, which expression is equivalent to the expression shown below? We have 2 plus 3 parenthesis 2x plus 5. Another problem of distribution, so let me rewrite it out so I don't mess it up in case I need to go back to it and start with the distribution. I have 2x is being multiplied by the 3. There's my first distribution. My second distribution will be 3 or plus 3. Let me put a plus there. Positive 3 plus 3 is being multiplied by the plus 5. All right. And Dr. Rob, don't forget you have a 2 out there. So let's deal with the plus 3 times the, the 2x. So 3 times 2, I got to multiply. That'll give me the 6. And don't forget, Dr. Rob, bring down that little x. So, so far I got 6x or plus 6x. Let's keep going with the next part. We got plus 3 times 5 is plus 15. So I got a plus 15 there. Dr. Rob, don't forget, you got a 2 in the front. Now, as we did with our column, we have our x's, and we got our constants. Let me put my x's in there, which is my plus 6x. And let me put my constants in there. I have a 2. And I have a plus 15. By the way, 2 plus 15 is plus 17. So I have a 6x plus 17. And that's choice C. 17 plus 6x. They wrote it backwards, which they allowed to write their expressions backwards. So there's our answer for number four. All right. Olivia had $24 to spend on seven pencils. After buying them, she had $10, so she bought them and had $10 left. How much did each pencil cost? Well, she had $24, and she had $10 left. So let me subtract that to see how much she spent. 
she spent $14. All right, so $14 spent. Now that I know she spent $14 on how many pencils? Seven pencils. So let me take the $14 that she spent and divide that by seven because there are seven pencils. And that'll give me the price for one pencil. So seven to 14 divided by seven is two. Two dollars for one pencil. And that's the price that she spent. Two dollars for one pencil. Okay, that's a nice word problem. Let me circle my answer. All right, let's keep moving. Whoa, find the value of the question mark. Describe how you arrived at your answer. All right, well, I'll discuss it with you and you can see my work. So we have all these different animals here and we want the question mark at the bottom there. So let's look where they have a lot of numbers. So like the first one, they have a lot of numbers here. They have seven minus two plus one. Two plus one is three. So they really have seven minus three, which is equal to four. So this polar bear guy is four. So wherever I see the polar bear, I'm going to put a four. And I'll even release him down here. Oop. Sorry about that. I'll release him down here. There's my four, four. So you can see him. All right. Now I got the polar bear I see plus 10. Four plus 10, that'll equal to the seal. Let me change color here. And that's 14. So the seal is 14. I'll put it up here and I'll put it up here. And I don't see the seal down there with the question mark. So let's keep going and see if we got some more numbers. Now I notice right here in the middle, I have the seal minus 3. 14 minus 3 is going to be this walrus. This 14 minus 3 is 11. And let me change color. So the walrus is 11. So, and I hear my wife calling me. So just a second. Just a second. Yeah. Uh, let me. Oh. So sorry out there, folks. I'm trying to pause this thing and get back. Let me get back to my stuff. So, so let me hide this and keep going. Sorry about that. I guess I'll have to continue somewhere here. So where was I? Ah, the seal. Um, the seal was 14 minus three gave me the walrus. The walrus is 11. I released them down here. So I have the penguin plus the penguin equals 14. So the same penguin is there twice. So two penguins equal the seal, which is 14. So I'll divide by two. That'll give me what one penguin is. One penguin is seven. And I'll release the penguin down here. So we can see that the penguin is seven. He's four uh, for the bear and the walrus is 11. So let me do a little adding of these two first animals. That gives me 18. And I got to subtract now four. So 18 minus four is 14 for the question mark. And that's what we were looking for, the question mark. All right, let's keep going. We're up to number seven. And we have another equation here. This is where the calculator definitely comes in handy. So I'm going to work backwards, though, doing the opposite and use my calculator. So I have a negative 10 thirds. And I'm going to put that in my calculator. So let me get my calculator out. So let's clear that. I have a negative 10 thirds. And now I'm going to do the opposite of minus. The opposite of minus is add. So I'm going to add one third to both sides. So I'm going to add one third. See how much that is? Negative three. All right. 
So why did I add Dr. Rob? To get rid of the one third. So I can have the three fifths G equals negative three. Now, again, I have to continue working backwards. If you remember at the very beginning, I said when you have a number next to a letter, that's a coefficient. It means multiply the number times the letter, and that'll give us an answer. So we have to do the opposite, which is divide by three-fifths in this case. That way we can get our answer. So we're going to divide by fractions, Dr. Rob? Yeah, we have calculators, so that's no problem. So the Three-fifths are going to cancel out, leaving us with the letter. So let me get my calculator and type my answer, which was negative three. It's going to divide by three-fifths. Move over, and this will give us the answer. Negative five is the answer. So let me pull that out so we can see what we did. And those are our steps. So my answer is negative five. So that was good calculator work. All right, let's move on. So I hope you understand what's going on because if not, uh, rewatch the video and bring in your questions. All right, number 19, which expression has the same value as the expression shown below? Well. Um, the rules for subtraction, because this is a subtraction problem, is there's first there's no such thing as subtraction. It's addition. So that means this gets changed to an addition problem. And the second term, which is the 7 eighths, gets changed to its inverse or opposite. Opposite of positive 7 eighths is negative 7 eighths. So that is the answer. Negative 3 eighths is being added to negative 7 eighths, which is choice D. So that's one way of dealing with it. But if you don't like that way, what you can do is figure out how much is negative 3 eighths minus 7 eighths on your calculator and see which one of these will give you that answer. All right, so that's one way of figuring it, but I'll go with D. Good to memorize the rules. All right, we saw Mr. Muhammad uh, al Khwarizmi, uh, the father of algebra. He tells us when we're dealing with equations to work backwards when we're solving the equations. So work backwards, choice B. Good to know. All right, last question. Solve for T. Uh, Usually we distribute negative three times T, and then we're gonna distribute uh, the negative three times the minus eight. And this is gonna equal to 32. All right, well, let's get our negative three times T is negative three T. Uh, negative three times negative eight is positive 24, and that equals 32. So let's see, what do we got here? Let's do the opposite, because we're supposed to work backwards. So instead of adding 24, I'm gonna subtract 24 from both sides. And that way the 24s will be canceled out on the left side, leaving me with a negative 3t. And my pen seems to be gone already. So negative 3t, and that equals 24 minus, uh, minus from 32, that's eight. Let me divide both sides by negative three. And that'll give me t is equal to negative eight thirds or negative two and two thirds. So there is our answer. So negative two and two thirds I like. Okay, so uh, that was an interesting question. Is that the only way to do it? No, I like uh, showing off this way myself. Let me show off something we do in accelerated math. 
we notice that when you are uh, dealing with problems that have parentheses next to a number, instead of multiplying and distributing the three out to all of the stuff in the parentheses, we do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So we're going to divide both sides by negative three. That way the negative threes will be gone, leaving us with just a T minus eight. Let me get my calculator so I can divide this out nicely. 32 divided by negative three, and that equals to negative 10.6. 10.6 repeating. All right. Now, all I got to do is work backwards, like Mr. Kazawa and me said. Instead of minusing 8, I'm going to add 8 to both sides. What that does, it gets rid of the minus 8, leaving me with the T. And now, I get negative 10 plus 8, which will give me negative 2 point repeating dec decimal 6 or negative two and two thirds. That's less steps and a lot of less work. I like that way much better. So think like my accelerated students and do it the shortcut way. So I hope you're understanding what's going on because if you're not, rewatch the video because ladies and gentlemen, guess what? We've come down to the end of our show. Really? Yeah. I got to go to work. So watch our channel on YouTube. Dan Robinson is my name, PKMS. Check out our latest movie, Math Prep 22. Hopefully we'll have Math Prep 23 in the next year coming. Uh, write me at DRobMath. Uh, treat me at DRobMath1. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing. And write me a comment. I do write back. Watch our show Math Time on Tuesdays from 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Optum Cable Vision only in Peekskill on Channel 15. Good luck on your exam. I know you'll do well because you've been watching my tutorial videos. If you want to study with me and want more information, write me at drobinson at peekskillschools.org. So I hope you enjoyed our video Reviewing for the Grade 7 Math Test on Equations, Topics from Unit 2 and 3. That's it from me, Dr. Rob, signing off. He's got to go to work.